couple times how we create our satellite maps for on our chart plotter that we're using so the first thing I need to point out is that satellite maps that we're creating here are only usable by B&G, Simrad and Lawrence chart plotters you can do this with Garmin it's a different procedure so this procedure won't be relevant to those but anyone with the other brands I've just mentioned can use this to create a map so we do it in two parts First we need to download the maps, and we download the maps, which is the satellite maps I'm talking here. We're using Google Satellite, ArcGIS, Bing Satellite, Yahoo Satellite, you have a choice. Um, so some will be better, some will have cloud cover, some will be higher resolution, so you pick the one you need. We download that with a program called SAS Planet. It is only for Windows computers, so if you're a Mac user, unfortunately there is no solution for you. Um, you cannot do this. Um, and we do use the SAS Planner as a backup to our chart plotter. So we download the images that we're looking for. Once we have those images, we then create our own custom map, which is an AT5 map, which is the format that these chart plotters are opening. So it would be great if you had a Raymarine or some of the other brands, whether they could actually open this up to allow this format. Um, I don't understand why they don't. It's a very expensive piece of equipment when you spent several thousand dollars on a chart plotter and you can only open purchase maps. It doesn't seem quite right. So I give full credit to B&G for doing this and also to Seawind who supplied this with our boat. We were actually looking for an alternate brand and um, very happy that they um, recommended this equipment to our boat. So we'll go over how we make them and I'll step through the processes and then show you a working map. So why are you using these maps? What are they for? Okay we use these maps um, because the maps that you get so we're using the Navionics charts, which are now owned by Garmin. Um, they don't give you the detail, particularly in coral reefs, sandbars, and some of the areas where you need a top-down view. So this is a great way, instead of launching a drone, you get a bird's eye view. But you must bear in mind, a sandbar can move. And so when the satellite image was taken, it might be a few years ago, it might be a week ago, it depends on how up-to-date you are in the image. So. It is not the be all and end all on sandbars because they move. However, coral does not move and you can clearly see it exactly where you are in relation to the coral. And the other benefit we've seen is some of the Navionics charts, they're not in the right spot. Islands are hundreds of metres off their true position where the satellite has been spot on. So we use these as a great protector to not run into coral bodies. Can you um, also see yourself and what your position um, on the map um, while you're using it? So by putting it into our chart plotter, which is our ultimate goal, um, instead of it being the Navionics depth chart, we now have the blue top-down view of the water. And so we can see by the shades of blue that how deep we are. Um, it's a pretty good guide, which is what most people use when they're travelling anyway. But obviously we can see the coral in direct relationship to the boat. So typically, I'll be out the front spotting because we still have the safety check of first-hand view. But Joanne now, instead of not knowing where she is in relation, can use the satellite image um, and see where the bonnies are in relation to the boat. So it gives us another level of safety where the Navionics charts just do not have that information. Can you use it on your laptop? So the great benefit we have is SAS Planet is our backup chart plotter effectively. So this program, uh, coupled with a external USB GPS and now gives us full functionality. We actually use it for all our waypoint management. Um, the chart plotter does do the same job but however when I'm downloading off the information off the internet I just put it straight into SAS Planet, I create my waypoints, I have the GPS plugged in, it's plotting where we go, I can see where we are. Um, it's not as functional obviously, um, not that we can set uh, routes and where we want to go to, but it's a, a good double check and if everything went bad here we would use our laptop as our backup. We have multiple backups of the program. Right, so we'll go now, I'll show you now how we download the programs that we need, how to get the image files that we needed and ultimately create the chart and stick it into the chart plot. The other program I want to just quickly cover is Overtail Map. So if you don't have a B&G Lawrence Simred chart plotter and you can't put these on, um, your choice is the laptop, but then if you're an Apple user, you can't use that, you're restricted to Overtail Map. 
We use it when we're heading to a dive site. Um, we take our phone with us and we can still have the satellite imagery to where we want to go. So it is useful, but you are far more restricted to the map source and also to the amount of data that you can keep. But it is still a very handy app. Um, so if you are Apple, unfortunately, that's what you'll be forced to use. One of the things we want to show is using our laptop as the backup chart plotter. Um, so we've bought a $15, $20, external USB GPS, so it plugs directly into the laptop via the USB port and is now a GPS receiver. So starting up SAS Planet again, this is our copy. Um, I can then under the top, under GPS, I can connect to my GPS receiver. And we can see here it is just at the moment polling and catching up. Um, and I'll just zoom out to where we are, back up. And we're currently sitting at Paradise Point in at the Gold Coast, and you can see our previous plots come in, and that is where we are. Now, one of the things we want to know and demonstrating here is I'm going to flick over to Google Satellite, and I can see here I'm anchored smack bang where that boat is. I couldn't have anchored that more accurately. But I can here see my depths, and I'll flick between a couple of different satellites, um, and they will download. That one's not very clear, so we'll go back to Google Satellite. Oh, we'll cut that out. And I can see the sandbar finishes here to here. Now, one of the great tools, and there are so many tools you need to go through the thing, is I can actually measure. So from my boat, I know that I'm 80 metres from that sandbar, and probably to about here, 42 metres from where that gets shallow. Now, if I want to flick across to Navionics charts, I don't have anywhere near that level of information nor accuracy, which is why we use it. Okay, so here is the Navionics chart. This is not the uh, Pacific chart, so we haven't got the, the high detail, but it shows the chart of Chesterfield Reef where we were earlier, uh, end of last year, and, and our waypoints. But once again, this was not a very well marked out area. So we were using satellite, and if we looked at our videos, you would have noticed we didn't have any Navionics charts. So we want to change our chart source. We don't want to use the Navionics charts by default. So what we'll press is our menu, and under here, our chart source. And it may not be on the front screen that this menu changed a little bit, so we pick on our chart source, and I don't want Navionics. So here, we can see I've actually created two sets of charts, one by Google and one by ArcGIS. So I'm gonna pick Google Satellite, and that will change over. And now, as you saw, there was a difference of where that reef actually was, so it was inaccurate. But from this, I can zoom in, and I can actually now see these locations and see Bommy. So here, may not be all that clear, so I'll change my chart source. And that was under more options, chart source, and now I'll go to ArcGIS and it'll come in. So in here I can see there are little Bommies that are a little bit deeper. And if I zoom in on here, there is actually a bommy on the screen. So it's obviously uncovered over a moment by our waypoint because we dive these locations. So this is what we're trying to create. So then when we're driving through, we actually see things in the water before we get to them. So the first thing we need to do is to get SAS Planet downloaded from the internet. So opening your browser, we go to sasgis.org forward slash download. Now the page will be in Russian so you need it to translate, so we will translate to English which should happen in a second, there we go and so we're going to choose the latest stable version of this date and this is in uh, beginning of May 2020 so download our version here, the latest stable and it will download. So now that we have SAS Planet Okay, so now we have SAS Planet. We're going to go to our downloads location. So I downloaded it to my desktop. So here it is here. And we're going to open SAS Planet. Now there is no installation for SAS Planet. You just run it once you unzip it. So it is in a compressed format. So we're going to just going to extract it to our desktop. I would run it off your C drive. Or um, maybe not program files x86 because it has permission issues. So I'm running mine off my spare drive in the laptop off a D drive. So now we have our SAS Planet. If you open that folder, all you have to do is just execute that file, the executable file to run it. So we're going to open SAS Planet, 
and so this is a fresh run and we're up and running okay so it's now loaded and we now have the base satellite map now I'm going to switch over here and under Google go to Google map and there's our base map now we need to make a change because by default it's in Russian so we need to set under here our map settings and on the end here the RU signifies Russian so we want EN for English and now OK and now we can zoom in and as you can see I'll zoom in on Australia and you can see the maps that are downloading now these maps once they have downloaded are what is available offline it's caching these to a folder which I'll show later and all of the information is available so what we're going to do is we're going to create a map a satellite map of Lady Musgrave Island so we're going to zoom in now we're going to change our map source so under Google we want satellite down the bottom you can see here we have a queue of 28 tiles so there are 28 tiles zooming comprising this view which is just loaded now at zoom 9 so we're going to keep zooming in I'm going to hover the mouse and just keep scrolling in so now we have zoom 14 and zoom 16 I can go up here to this island now you can see here the satellite images are not clear over the northern part over this reef now what we're going to do to get the name of this I'm actually going to flick over it just to show the demonstration of marine maps Navionics marine charts and as you can see it's the Fairfax Islands so yes you can download the Navionics charts however making the map is not very successful because it will be huge you will be many gigs of data as opposed to just a couple of gig if you buy the SD card so it's a backup but for your chart plotter it's not really suitable so we're going to flip back over to the shortcut here of maps Google and satellite now there's a shortcut there of G I'm just going to press G and flick to it so I want this area here to be in clearer resolution so I'm at 16 now I can see the zooms that I've got up here by flicking into here at zoom 18 and you can see there are grey squares now you can change whether you want it light or dark if you have or not if you have the download available or not so we've got it to showing darker for not having now when I zoom into 18 you can see it's downloaded the image so I'm going to zoom back out and what we're going to do is I'm going to pick up here I want the polygonal selection and I'm going to say I want this area like that now yes tick the, hit the tick or press enter under Google Maps I want satellite Google Maps I want zoom 18 and start and as you can see it's filling in and they're downloading now if you're on a fast internet connection this will be very quick and so that has downloaded and task is complete now I want to just go back up here to the Fairfax Islands to demonstrate so I'm going to turn off the showing what we have and I'm going to zoom back into zoom 18 and as you can see there is no image here but Google satellite is not your only satellite I can also go Bing satellite which is V now I'm going to zoom out Bing doesn't have a satellite unfortunately for this one that's a poor demonstration but answer under here I can go under Esri and I can go ArcGIS imagery and as you can see it's downloaded and I can zoom in and that's at 16 and now I'm at 18 and there's the images sharpening up and as you can see lovely clear image and I'm moving around downloading the images as we go and as you can see very clear if we flick back over to Google by pressing um, by going back at the maps and Google and satellite or G very poor quality so flicking between Yahoo Bing and the ArcGIS you'll find generally one of them will be better in some areas and some are better in others so going back here to Lady Musgrave let's just see if our better satellite image will come from ArcGIS okay so we're downloading in 16 and it looks like this is a clearer image so I'm going to pull down 18 so instead so as you can see I'm downloading just by scrolling around um, once you've done this you permanently have the images on your 
hard drive and hopefully we've done everything now I'll just drop back out so I'm just gonna turn on the the showing and as you can see I've missed a little bit over here so that's a great way of working out where I've missed and that's it so now we have Lady Musgrave all downloaded and a little bit around the border so we all good so now we have our satellite imagery so I'm going to turn this back off right now we want to export this satellite imagery to make a map so what we choose is again our selection tool and because we've already got it selected on the screen we can actually go last selection which is that same area which is highlighted around here so what we want to do this time is instead of download which we did previously we want to stitch and we want to stitch it at zoom 18 you might be able to get the zoom 20 in some areas such as the Whit Sundays. it does go to that level and we're going to save it to where so I'm going to specify here that I want under my desktop I will make a new folder and we will call that Lady Musgrave and we will output the image as Lady Musgrave.jpg. Save. We want KML, which is the geo referencing for this file. So this is what defines the latitude and longitude corners of the image we've created. So we hit start and it has now created it. So at this point we now have exported a geo-referenced image file of... Okay, so we've downloaded our map creator. Now inside the zip file are multiple zips of basically the different application and a few of the different things you'll use, but we only need the application. So up the top here, I'm a 64-bit Windows, so this is the one we're opening. And then inside of that is the actual folder for Insight Map Creator. So I'm just going to drag that out to the desktop and extract it and we can close that zip program down and here is our application ready to launch and all we have to run is Insight Map Creator and now we have the program up and running and ready for use. Okay, the first thing we need to change is we need to change our mode. It doesn't appear it, but there are different modes in this program. So under View, Processing Modes, we want Keyhole. So we need to create a specific file for this program um, that is used in the map creation. So under here, we're going to go Add Folders. Under the desktop, that's where I put it, wherever you've picked it, I'll pick Lady Musgrave and I'll choose. At this point, I hit Build. Now what this has done is it's created the new file here, this JGW file, the Keyhole file. Um, it needs that for the map creation. Previously we only had these two, we now have an extra file. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to create our raster map. So under View, Processing Modes, Raster Mode. So we're now creating a raster mode map. We now add folders, so we create our maps. So we'll go back under the desktop and Lady Musgrave and we'll choose. Now the minimum resolution, how low do you want it to go? Um, I have been using two, it probably could be a little bit higher. The lower you go, the larger the map files will be. So at the moment my standard settings have been using two and 64. And I found that's been a good balance for me. It probably could be four um, as the next size up. Now the working directory is where is it going to create the maps. So I'm going to make them in the same spot. So back under Lady Musgrave and I'll create a new folder here as raster map and I didn't like it raster map and choose so that's where it's going to make the maps now the problem I had was my chart plotter did not like the atlas version it had to be backed wound back to version 10 so if you're doing this and you're having problems try a different atlas version and it may work better at a lower number now at this point I can click build and I'll open this folder up so we can see what happens in here so under raster map which is where it's going to make the files it will work and this will work straight away however when you look at the map it will not be named anything meaningful it's just insight map creator the way you get more and I had a lot of trouble finding this there was not many 
reference information on the internet was under advanced options atlas atlas options atlas description and then you type in the description but the description is not the description you don't just type in here lady musgrave lady musgrave that will not work you need to actually specify the map name and this is denoted by a capital M equals and then the name of the chart that you want so this now will be called Lady Musgrave so at this point I close there is no save it's just a close but if you go back into these features if you're not sure that you've set them if you click they'll come back up so you know you've got them and the Atlas version is 10 so we're happy with that we've got our zoom 2 to 64 all we do now is click build so at this point it's processing the file and determining and now it's creating the maps for them so this is the AT5 maps which is what the map source of a um, of an insight map creator file is so under bound AT5s you can see them being created at the zooms and that is finished that was quite quick because it was a small map these are now our maps that are now ready to go into the chart plotter so we will open up a new window we will pick our SD card and we'll just put a copy onto the SD card now obviously we don't want all the, the names bound 85 so I'm gonna call it Lady Musgrave makes sense for me the chart plotter when it will open up will actually start up we'll go through the folders and look find these maps and inside of that is the naming that we set with that M equals Lady Musgrave so at this point our SD card is now ready to go and we're ready to stick it in the chart plotter so we've just inserted our SD card um, with the new map on it so we're going to zoom up to the area that we've just created which was Lady Musgrave so it's up here I'm going to zoom in and this is the detail for Navionics for Lady Musgrave Island and we can see it's not too informative I wouldn't be too keen driving around in that um, and that's the charts the best charts you've got but we now we can select under here under more options chart source and I want Lady Musgrave now that's the level of detail that we've got when we come in and I can zoom right in I can drive in I can check that I'm within the channel I can follow around looking at previous bombies so I can look for where I'm shallow I can see here this guy is quite close to one and I can pick and choose where I want to anchor in the best sand so this is how we get around um, being cautious so we don't hit I clearly would prefer that than that detail is immensely improved and this is um, mainly the fact is we don't have internet cover um, out there oh, yes. so we okay. can't use um... okay so one of the reasons why we're doing this is there's intermittent cover at Lady Musgrave you're a fair way out but if you're on the outer reef you're in Chesterfield reef there is no cover you cannot get this information and if you're saying you're going to use Google satellite on your phone tablet device Google does not let you store the images on the tablet it buffers them and deletes them once you move which is the problem we ran into so this is why we use SAS planet the downloads stay on your hard drive indefinitely so you've always got them and you accumulate quite a bit of data in the end but you now can safely travel these areas holding the data so I hope you found the video helpful um, it's taken us a fair while to work out how to get these programs to achieve this result I hope you can use it to create a map and you can then enter and exit your anchorage safely and not run aground and not cause yourself any damage.